if we compare Euripides with the uh, other two great tragedians, certain aspects of his dramatic technique and um, social interests really come over very powerfully. He's the most accessible. He wrote in a kind of Greek that actually sounded like everyday Greek to the audiences. We know this from two statements by the philosopher Aristotle. He says that Euripides wrote in a, in, in, in a lively and colloquial way and he made his heroines and heroes speak like ordinary human beings. That is why I think for young people and for people who are first approaching Greek tragedy in the theatre, it's very often a, a Euripidean play like Medea that gets people interested in the first time. My own uh, uh, induction into uh, what was so great about Greek tragedy took place at the age of 16 at a production of Euripides' Medea. The, um, in terms of form, he is deeply interested in um, gods. He loves to have gods on stage either at the beginning or end. Despite the realistic tone of what his humans are up to, he seems to like a rather shocking contrast of what they're doing with things that happen at the beginning and the end. So in the Trojan Women, for example, which is one long lament, uh, terrible suffering of the women of Troy who are being sent off into slavery and they're terribly bereaved, that is very realistic. It feels like a prisoner of war camp. But at the beginning, we have Athena and Poseidon plotting the future for the Greeks, and then we just transfer and they actually say, hey, look, there's Hecuba. They get to point out to us, and then we go off into the real human world where we stay. Euripides also liked to have gods come on at the end to offer a solution to the crisis, and several plays, you've got more than one god. So the Hippolytus begins with Aphrodite saying, I am going to wreak vengeance on this household, in particular this young man, Hippolytus, and many people will suffer. And at the end, Artemis, the god, goddess he really loves, Hippolytus really loves, turns up um, basically in his death scene. So it's framed by these two goddesses. The social aspects of Euripides which are most interesting are, one, his apparent obsession with female psychology. He explores women of all ages and in all conditions and, and virtuous and evil. Um, in a depth and subtlety that uh, is, is, not, is not the case with the other two tragedians. And in every play, if a play hasn't got a prominent woman in, then it really can't be by Euripides. The uh, other group he's very interested in are barbarians and slaves, lower class people. He often gives a very important role to somebody who's not an aristocrat, such as the nurse in the Hippolytus, who actually on the human level causes the whole tragedy and children. Euripides understood that little children are what can really tug at the heartstrings. He got that. He got that little children go with tragedy. So right from his very earliest play, we've got Alcestis, we actually have a little boy and a little girl weeping on stage while their mother dies. This is like a sort of Hollywood moment of tear jerking. This is like Bambi or the Lion King, you know, the, the horrible parting. And he, he absolutely understood that. And I think that's a very important part of why he's called by Aris, uh, Aristotle the most tragic of the poets. This long word, tragic kotatos, the most tragic of all. Trojan women, the corpse of the little boy, but we've seen him alive in his mother's arms before. Medea, guess what? First ever children we hear screaming from backstage. My mother is coming for me with a weapon. Please, please help. And we can't get up and help. Um, play after play, Euripides, offers a child in serious trouble and I think that is, 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 is a brilliant emotional touch. Sophocles then imitated him and started doing the same.